photography to me, it, it was not just one point in my life that I realized that photography is something that I would dedicate most of my life to. It's something that kind of was developed or influenced in me because my father used to love to take photographs. So when I was younger, every weekend we would, he would take all of us to to parks and you know places like that to to take photographs. So as I was growing up, photography was part of my life. And I ended up going to university to do communications. And when I finished, I uh, was lucky to find a job in media institution. And at that time, I was doing um, videography. While I was doing that, I still knew that uh, photography was something that was dear to me. And then one day, I decided to put down the video camera and buy uh, a camera for still photography. And I never looked back since then. The kind of photograph I love the most is, you know, doing landscapes. I really enjoy going out in nature and just absorbing nature, appreciating nature, and I can spend hours and hours looking at nature. So while I was doing that, I met some other people that it was a secluded place, but they were throwing garbage and bottles and stuff like that. And I started thinking that the generations to come, how are they going to see the places that we have been? This nice and natural areas that we have and how we have changed them, ordered them and messed them up. And that's when I decided to say, okay, I should also start taking images of cityscapes to show how nature is the best, you know, architect representing the way the world is. It's the best thing that has happened to the world. But we, as human beings, we come in and we change it, we order it and we do our own thing, thinking that that is better than what we found. So that's why I do landscapes and I also do uh, cityscapes. Color is the, the most Im important thing. I, I do some black and white, but mostly I do uh, color because in nature, you cannot do it justice by, by putting it in black and white. Like, you no know, four colors, if you put them in black and white, you're not doing justice to what you're seeing. You have to put it in color to appreciate all, oh, you know, the colors, the yellows and, you know, the reds and everything else. And I also use uh, Photoshop and Lightroom and, and I try to boost them a little bit. So it brings interest and it brings emphasis to the beauty, like particularly the, the, the colors. And that is true of images that I take. Most of them, you see that the colors are a little bit stronger because I want to bring emphasis to the beauty of the colors of nature. And the same goes to uh, cityscapes. I like lines. So things that are in, in lines, like buildings, I, I, I look at the shape of the building, if it's a square building, if it's an oval, the lines it, it really interest me. And some of the images I also use the slow shutter speed so you can have you know the light trails and they form lines uh, within the image those, those are things that interest me and also boosting up the, the the colors to to bring impact to our work yeah i know the image that you're talking about i i took it in uh, i think it's lake louise but the reason that i put that in black and white is because because of the mountains i wanted to to show the majesty of the mountain. So instead of using color, which, you know, people will just look at the color and, you know, not look at how big the mountains are, I decided to put it in black and white so I can show the majesty of the uh, of the mountains. You're right. Uh, but that is part of me looking at what we as human beings have done to our environment, which otherwise was perfect to me. You know, when I go up to Gatineau Park, for for example, to me, that is perfect. But when I come down to the city and you see concrete everywhere, to me, it, it doesn't quite appeal to me. Although I take those images, but it's kind of, for me, trying to rebel against what we have done to otherwise a uh, beautiful world that was uh, given to us. I think my, my work is kind of you know, making us to be conscious of what we are doing to what we have now. So it's kind of looking forward to say that well, what we were, what we found here was perfect, but what we are doing to what we found here is not necessarily the best. I always think of the archaeologists that go out and, and dig and find, uh, you know, ancient cities and stuff like that, that another million years from now, what are people going to say? to what we have done to the world today. So the people in the past have done whatever they did, but it is now up to us to take care of the world that we have been given. And uh, I was really 
sad one day because where, where I live, it's kind of a, it used to be a secluded place and there were bushes behind me. And then one day I was woken up by a sound of a bulldozer cutting down the trees because they were building new homes. That really just broke my heart. And then there was one time that a fox, because of all the commotion, actually ran and started sleeping in front of my doorstep. And those are things that, you know, affect me that what we are doing is not good to the environment that was left to us. So we have to learn from the past and now we have an opportunity to conserve what we have. And talking about artists in general, my work also is trying to enter into the modern Canadian society because what I found is that uh, most artists, be it uh, painters and stuff like that, they are appreciated when they do ethnic paintings or artwork from where they come from and they're not considered uh, mainstream so by doing cityscapes and all that stuff i'm trying to bridge my you know my own heritage and trying to enter into the uh, mainstream as an african canadian particularly when when i try to uh, to photograph people and, and i say I, I was disappointed one time that i had a chance to take an image of one one of the best uh, poets uh, that we have in in canada uh, george Eliot clark and when I posted that, I was disappointed that a lot of people were, you know, sending me messages to say, who, who is this, uh, who, who is this person? But he has been doing poetry for a long, uh, long time and he's a person of color. Because even the people that we are familiar with his poems, some of them thought that he was not a person of, of color. So some of my work is also to bring out, you know, people of color that otherwise uh, left out or not recognized for the work that they have done. I feel identity is uh, important because I, I, identity is what determines your outlook. We, we are all, um, I shouldn't say victims because <laughs> victim is a bad word, but I can't think of, uh, uh, of the right word here. We are influenced by, by our identity, our environment. Our environment is part of our identity. So for, for somebody like myself that was, uh, you know, born and spent most of my, uh, my life in, um, in Africa, my identity has been affected by that, but you know, and the people that were born here and grew up here, their identity is also different. So, and it affects the way that they look at the world and it affects the way that they, uh, you know, create things. So I feel identity is important and it is also important, particularly here, that uh, people of color, you know, still facing a lot of, uh, load blocks and uh, they have to force many doors open that it's important that we also take into consideration and help the other people that are coming up you know to go through the doors that somebody has kicked open or you know to break that glass ceiling there are a lot of people that have inspired me and i mean either directly or indirectly and i would say that you know my my father is one of them because he was out uh, there every weekend uh, with the whole family and taking out pictures and stuff like that and we are happy when we see the the pictures uh, my brother-in-law is also somebody that you know take pictures and uh, you know help me to to develop by my own skill but for people that are professionals there is a lot of people that i admire and I look at their work. There are people like Terry White that, uh, you know, is doing fantastic job and, um, he, you know, creating um, amazing images and also trying to help upcoming photographers by teaching them, you know, how to take photographs and uh, stuff like that. But I, I'm also careful at the same time not to dwell too much on, you know, other people because the, the more you get obsessed with a particular photographer, you may end up copying their style. Instead of creating your own original style, you may just end up being a copy of, uh, I don't know, Ansel Adams or somebody, you know, if, if you look at their work too much. So in as much as I've been inspired by other people, I try not to uh, be influenced in my work by uh, uh, what they have done. To me, it all starts in, in in my mind. Like if I go to a location, I have to see the picture before I even like, you know, pick up the camera and put it up to my face. So I envision first and then I take the, uh, the, the camera and then I have to think of all the, uh, the technical stuff. I mean, what ISO I have to use, what aperture I have to use and, you know, all those things. But it all starts, you know, with a mental image of what uh, I want to capture and how I want to, uh, to capture it. My photography is, um, you know, mostly I like to use natural light. 
and I also like to to go a little bit wide than uh, that, that most photographers uh, usually do. So in in as much as I also take photographs in the studio, the photographs that I like the most are the photographs that are taken by natural light. So the photographs that I take outside in nature. And particularly the photographs that I take in nature because it's combining the two things that I like, which is nature and also taking uh, images of people. So my style, as far as it's concerned, it's more to use a, a more wide angle lens so I can capture what is going on you know, behind uh, the individual or in the environment that uh, person is. And I also don't like, you know, posed images. I do them if the client, that's what the client want, but I enjoy capturing the moment and that is something that my partner always complains a lot about me that you know oh, you, you should you know warn me that you're about to take the image and i would say like why do you want me to warn you it, it's nice when you know you capture a moment instead of capturing something that you're paused and you're ready for you know for it the thing is you have to learn to be satisfied with what you have done because i strongly believe that um, perfection is something that you can aim for but it's something that you cannot achieve so at a certain point, you have to say that, you know what, this is good enough. It may not be perfect, but it's good enough. And then you, you, you stop. And this is one of the things that is very difficult, particularly now with uh, digital photography, because you, you have a million, million options and you, you have a million times that you can redo and change what you have done and start to do it again. And that creates that dilemma that people will spend, you know, two, three hours or days or, you know, even months working on one image. And that comes to the problem of trying to be perfect. But if you just learn to be satisfied with, with, with what you have done and to be content, then you will know when to stop. Yeah, I have so many uh, ideas uh, in my head going on now. And, you know, I have so many images that some of them, I want to convert them into NFTs. And uh, I'm also working on a new website that is going to... Um, highlight the work of artists, mainly artists of color, but everybody's welcome, but looking mainly to artists of color that need exposure. That's uh, one of the things that I'm working on. And uh, apart from that, I have so many other, like my Evernote, uh, the notes that I have there, there's so, so many ideas that it will take my lifetime to, to go through all those ideas. But for this year, I'm concentrating on the website and the platform that people can uh, promote their work. Mm -hmm.